Today also with us, Dr. Teresa Cardoso, the Assistant Professor of the Open University from Portugal. Dr. Cardoso, could you please describe some of the challenges you and your community had to face and how were you able to manage them? Today, I greet all my all the participants, including my fellow panelists, and I express my sincere gratitude to the whole WISE team for this invitation. It is my great honor and privilege to be joining. So I take the opportunity to share uh, later on the story of the project, which stands for Rebirth on the Internet in Portuguese, hoping, hoping it might be inspirational to you. And uh, this pandemic has um, made us rebirth uh, in the internet, in the digital uh, settings, whenever that's possible. Because as Dr. Uh, Hauru uh, just mentioned, uh, it has um, even widened the digital divide. Uh, working at an open university, I have already uh, a focus on uh, working from home. So I would say the biggest challenge now is to be at home, also sharing my home office with my daughters and my husband, uh, and uh, probably the amount of Zoom meetings have uh, largely increased. Uh, but um, well, as uh, th that's probably one of the, the major challenge, and the other, I would say uh, it had increased the need or the urgency to look for alternative options and uh, also including alternative uh, digital technologies to work with the, the, um, the students to be delivering and providing uh, continuously uh, the learning materials and also to be backing up uh, all the, um, the student community and the research community. Um, Dr. Cardoso, before we go back to the specifics of your, um, of your project, uh, I would like to touch more uh, on what you just mentioned. So can you please give us this um, um, uh, example um, or uh, tell us more about, you mentioned some of the ICT tools that you use uh, for this online education, for e-learning. Um, what is this experience? Can you tell us uh, what is the feedback you get from your students related to some homeschooling uh, that you have to witness? Um, it's interesting because um, I've had the chance to be um, doing training to wider communities, to schools, uh, not only at the university uh, level, but also doing uh, teacher training uh, in a continuous training of teaching and also working with their pupils from basic and secondary school. And so it's been uh, interesting because um, I come up with different experiences in different schools in a, a small country like Portugal. Uh, different platforms are being used which of course entails a, a broader range of ICT skills on the schools, also teachers and students. So we are using Zoom like today, but also the, the live um, sessions on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, we are using also Google Meet, uh, Google Classroom, Moodle, um, what else? Um, I've come also uh, come up across with the school where we have um, WebEx uh, platform. So a lot of um, experiences now, which probably wouldn't take place uh, if we were not facing this um, situation. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Cardoso, I'd like to go back to your project. Uh, could you please uh, give us uh, uh, more explanation, more details about it? And um, as VISIS community knows, what VISIS stock taking is all about is to really take as much um, material, as much information about projects that not only making impact in their own communities, but could maybe be replicable elsewhere. So is your project replicable in other countries? Uh, do you already have any uh, partnerships or discussions uh, in this matter. And finally, um, ICTs are not only helping implement 
this is action lines, but they're also helping advance sustainable development goals. How sustainable is your project? Uh, thank you, Vladimir. I will try to speak and relate to some other points that were mentioned by the previous panelists. And as a start, I would have to acknowledge that ours is a collective voice out of many brains, and I am thankful to all our followers, partners, and members, including the main and key mentor of the project, John Pinto, who envisions it uh, with this aim and this motto of being making impact and so the sustainability of the project, the replicability is really quite uh, an important thing. So I've had the pleasure of been working with him for a long time, the past years, and uh, it is the Revivir on the internet. This project is an initiative to support online social networks, to strengthen new forms of active job search and promote employability, social integration, socialization, and social and digital inclusion in the Madeira region, Portugal. The aim to help unemployed adults to take advantage of social networks like Facebook uh, and using them to improve their own employability is most at stake now because uh, being a categorized and also isolated population with very low uh, digital skills with uh, very low uh, educational uh, competences, this has come to be even more important. So uh, these global social instruments can respond to those needs, contribute to the development of local communities, and currently the various online spaces involve more than 50,000 people in a region with less than 255,000 inhabitants. So, in view of the various implications of the coronavirus pandemic, from the social level of individuals to their professional and economic situation, the project has mobilized a number of initiatives to help the relief of social isolation, improve the good use of social networks, strengthen media literacy and digital skills, and to promote their job search through these online uh, social networks. And so there is a strong pedagogical, social and solidarity basis relying on voluntary work in a spirit of social entrepreneurship. You were mentioning and asking, uh, addressing now specifically the, the um, replicability of the project. Uh, it is clear that it can be applied uh, to other uh, contexts, uh, nation, nation and worldwide. For instance, uh, in replicating our model, the website, uh, one of our online spaces, is able to function as a, a hub or integrating platform for general content complemented by the Facebook page and group to promote them. The Facebook group itself can be a tool to promote interaction with the target audience, adding other specific content to the previous content already made available. So there is peer support as well as autonomous uh, self-learning um, pace because it is a fact. Sometimes we are faced with the challenge of having no connectivity. So we have to be working and preparing uh, our job interviews offline. So uh, this is also something to be taking into account. As Daniel mentioned, um, the access to education, to training shouldn't be uh, at stop uh, and it should be available worldwide from anywhere in the world. So this implies uh, the existence of partnerships. For instance, um, we have been contacted by um, uh, companies who want to recruit uh, for specific uh, jobs. And uh, so we believe it has this power of uh, being replicated enhancing the power of ICT as a promoter of global and community development at the local scale. I would also like to mention that um, uh, this uh, strategy, uh, it's uh, innovative and different from other initiatives. So uh, this is why maybe we have been having this positive reaction uh, because we also uh, cater and look 
very uh, carefully to the moderation and to the specific needs of these local communities uh, in a global uh, perspective using the um, global um, tools. And so uh, we believe it strengthens these new forms of active job search, promote employability, social integration, as mentioned before. And these are in alignment with the Portuguese national strategy for digital skills in code, Portugal in code 2030, and the United Nations 2030 agenda for sustainable development, namely through the SDG 4, 5, 8, 10, and 17. So uh, maybe I should uh, um, get uh, the floor back to you, but uh, I think I covered all the aspects you were addressing or wanting me to share, and um, thank you. Sure, um, I'm sure that there is not much more you can share, and I do invite you not to um, um, stay idle or wait for my question during this session, but also, you know, to have your own session, bring your community, bring your students, uh, bring your colleagues, tell us more about uh, the project itself, but maybe uh, at, at this moment, what I personally would like to learn, and I'm sure most of the attendees and communities, what does open university mean? Is this something that um, uh, ICTs are, are uh, more involved and used? What is the trend of using ICT tools in education these days? And do you think the future um, will have more of it uh, as we have witnessed during the pandemic? Well, um, the, the story of open universities around the world uh, dates back uh, a long time ago. In Portugal, uh, we've just celebrated a um, little more than 30 years. And we started off with the traditional media, as just mentioned earlier on, with TV. In uh, 2007, we shifted to fully online e-learning, delivering all the courses um, from graduation to post-graduation. And so we have indeed um, been working with uh, a student community who is uh, placed working uh, around the world because we are focused to adults uh, learning. So um, our uh, community, our students are adults who have a professional life, who have family responsibilities and they have to be coping and managing that with the, their learning. So th they come to us to have uh, a degree or to um, update on specific uh, requirements, for instance, from uh, seven, several uh, services or sectors from the civil society, as you mentioned. Uh, and so uh, since that shift uh, from the traditional to, let's say, the new media, we are uh, incorporating more uh, the ICT, using the technologies, integrating also uh, experience and um, delivering new formats of learning, for instance, with the MOOCs, uh, using uh, open educational resources. Um, and so there is this, um, it, it's, uh, so natural that uh, sometimes uh, we don't uh, reflect because it's our uh, daily basis. But yes, we started by using, let's say, podcasts, videos, um, usually because we have students from different time zones, uh, the focus is on asynchronous interactions because you can imagine how difficult it can be to be coping with different time zones. Um, working and um, also looking for uh, a Portuguese speaking community, but we have also um, foreign students. And so it's been really interesting, this cultural diversity, these different backgrounds they have, including on ICT competences. And so that is why we try to provide a broad range of resources. Um, and also to, to be integrating their own personal learning environments within uh, our um, formal education settings and scenarios environments. Definitely these days education is not just one direction, but it's something that over the discussion between the students and the professors, sure. we see that um, uh, online universities and uh, all other ICT tools for education are becoming more and more credible 
uh, at the, some time ago, uh, when I was a student, uh, um, some long time ago, uh, you, you, the online universities were just um, um, a very uh, a rarity uh, and not as credible as uh, the traditional university. And another example I would like to mention before I go back to uh, Daniel is um, I remember how some of those um, uh, e-learning platforms, uh, such as Wikipedia, uh, was not taken as a serious, incredible resource when you do papers. I do hope that uh, you yourself, uh, Therese, and your colleagues are now on Wikipedia, involved in this discussion, so that students can really go and use this uh, online ma materials instead of just going to the libraries. Thanks, thank you very much for sharing this uh, uh, with us. Uh, we really uh, much appreciate it. We also invite you to the VISIS Forum and uh, to maybe organize uh, at the youth track um, some, some sessions uh, to be speaker there, uh, even to move some of the uh, courses at the VISIS Forum as uh, while we are doing it in virtual in virtual uh, space and format. Thank you. And I will just would mention that we also focus on a life long learning perspective. So Vladimir, I also invite you to be uh, an open university student uh, nowadays, okay? <laughs> Definitely, I, I, I do consider myself uh, as, a, as a, a student emeritus. Uh, I don't want to uh, ever finish that. Uh, I am yet to uh, think of what will I be when I grow up. Uh, at the time being, uh, I am serving as an international servant uh, working in UN, I'm very happy with that. Uh, but uh, who knows what the future will bring. Uh, uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. So thank you very much, Teresa. I'll come back to you uh, on thank more you. Uh, academic uh, advising uh, soon. Daniel, um, I would...